watching. Thanks for. I don't know, you're watching us work. You're at home just sitting there while we work. What kind of an arrangement is this? And meanwhile, there's some woman nobody knows named Candy in our audience tonight. I'm... So, what happened to the security measures? You, did you check her out? Did you make sure she works here? Yeah, she works here. She does? She, uh, first day today. What yeah. does she do here? Uh, I think she. <laughs> she. I think she. She helps uh, the production. All right. Well, you see, our <laughs> security is top notch. Thanks for joining us here in Los Angeles. You know, here um, in LA, county health officials were hoping we would be close to herd immunity by now. They were hoping we'd get there by July. Now they're saying it probably won't happen until late August because a lot of people are in no rush to get shots. And it, it, here's a, instead of vaccine, I think what we should do is start calling it arm Botox. You just, <laughs> That should be the rule. If you don't get the vaccine, you aren't allowed to get tattooed or your lips plumped, okay? And the most frustrating thing is a lot of these unvaccinated people aren't just avoiding getting the shot. They're not wearing masks. They're like, pandemic's over. Not for you, it isn't. You didn't, listen, you didn't chip in for the gift. You don't get to sign the card, okay? But things are settling down. Slowly, we have begun the process of reigniting our social lives. And it isn't easy because, like, where do you start? Who do you start with? Who do you see first? It's tough. So we came up with a COVID-style priority plan to help. And so first, and also last, we have the red tier. The red tier, these are people you did not communicate with at all during the pandemic. They never texted to say, you okay, or sup. They never, they didn't drop off a loaf of bread. And <laughs> you didn't speak to them even once. These are people, not only do you not have to see them soon, you never have to see them again, okay? <laughs> Next closest to the bottom, we have the purple tier. These are the friends and relatives who were too in touch during the pandemic. The ones who forced you into the Zoom happy hours that went well past the free 40 minutes. You've seen enough of them. They're near the back of the line. Then we have the orange tier. These are people who, like, recorded a birthday video message for you or maybe drove to your house and waved on your... But maybe they dropped off a pie. They get a priority slot. And finally, the top tier is the yellow tier. This is anyone who, over the course of the pandemic, used the bathroom in your house, okay? That's how we're gonna judge it. <laughs> if their pants were off under your roof, not only can you get together, you can wrestle if you want to. You can really go crazy. So that, I hope that helps. In New York now, almost everything is as it was in New York, including state politics. Embattled Governor Andrew Cuomo is hosting a lavish fundraiser presumably to kick off a bid for a fourth term in office. The dinner will cost $10,000 a plate, and for an extra 250, he'll whisper something in your ear that will haunt you for decades. <laughs> but the fundraiser, they say it's being held in an undisclosed location, which is exactly what you want to hear from a guy facing multiple sexual harassment accusations. But the New York Times, they spoke to eight people off the record who were invited to the fundraiser. Only two said they plan to go. It's basically his version of OnlyFans now, this thing. <laughs> this is the invitation. If you read all the way to the bottom, you see 6 to 9 p.m., ladies drink free, so... <laughs> Clomo Hitos for everyone. <laughs> Meanwhile, up the I-95 and the Connecticut House of Representatives, because of COVID, the public has not been allowed to attend these legislative sessions as they usually are, and as a result, the legislators have been drinking on the job. For Republicans and Democrats have been drinking during work hours in Connecticut. And while it is nice to see them finally agree on something, the result of that merrymaking is this now viral video of Representative Robin Comey trying to say something. A constituent of mine um, I, uh, came up to me uh, and, and wanted to know um, why she was... Uh, um, able to um, um, excuse me um, I had to tell her that uh, that she was um, um, yeah, keep humming you'll you'll get there eventually I was wondering if this was an opportunity for her to um, um, uh, um, 
opportunity to for her to um, <laughs> understand that she was able to um, Oh, she was, oh, it's so close. It was like she's trying to order off the Wendy's drive-thru menu at 3 a.m. She was, she issued a formal apology afterwards. She said several factors led to this episode, including anxiety, exhaustion, too much wine at dinner, and living in Connecticut also. And of course, everyone scoured her social media. Turns out she's got quite the drunk history. In April, she celebrated National Beer Day. Go, go, compañeros. And in September, she tweeted, I did not buy enough wine for this news. Well, I don't know what the news was, but it seems like you did buy enough wine. <laughs> Guillermo, can you imagine a person drinking on the job? No, no way, no. It's not acceptable. It's really <laughs> unthinkable. In North Korea, Kim Jong-un has appointed a number two, to a number two to serve as his second in command. I'm not a historian, but do countries usually have an assistant dictator? <laughs> a lot of people expected that his sister would get the job, but that was not to be. North Korean state media released a video of the new number two today. <laughs> oh, wait, wait a minute, I know that guy. I guess he was looking for a healthier work environment after Trump. In America's North Korea, the Sunshine State, from time to time, we enjoy taking a look at what's going on. And tonight, we are doing it again in a Governor DeSantis edition of This Week in Florida. I am proud to be here today in the Everglades as we kick off registration for the 2021 Python Challenge. Participants who remove the most pythons and who capture the longest pythons will receive prizes. <laughs> Unfortunately, all the prizes are pythons, so it's a, it's a pythonathon going on there in Florida. We have a good show here tonight. Michael Che and Killian Murphy are with us. And also, I'm excited about the band we have on this show tonight. It's a group of young girls who caught the attention of the world last month with a song that they wrote and performed in the L.A. Public Library, which is pretty punk rock in and of itself. And their music is, too. They're backstage right now. I wanted to say hello to them. This is the Linda Lindas. Hi, hey! Linda Lindas. That's Mila, Lucia, Eloise, and Bella. I got that correct, ladies? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Very good. Now, we have two sisters, a cousin, and a friend, correct? Yeah. yeah. Why are you called the Linda Lindas? Uh, there's a Japanese indie film called Linda, Linda, Linda. And in it, there are high school girls who cover the song Linda Linda by the Blue Hearts. So we're kind of named after both of those. So However, you, none of us are named Linda. You, none, none of you are Lindas. You cut off a Linda, and now you got the Linda Lindas. Now tell us about the song you wrote. The song, well, tell us the title of the song. The song is called Racist Sexist Boy. Racist Sexist Boy, and this is about a boy you know. Um, the backstory is that a boy from school told me that his dad told him to stay away from Chinese people, and I told him that I was Chinese, and he backed away from me. And there's also a lot of like sexism around boys our age, and unfortunately, a lot, a lot of people like every age, right? And so we were really angry, and we decided to write a song about it. And then, how did you find out <laughs> after you wrote the song, you shot it, you put it online? How did you find out it had become very popular? Well, I was in history class, and my phone, like, kept buzzing. And my teacher kept looking at me, like, what are you doing? And then I opened my Instagram, and it's like my whole feed is of us. <laughs> and I was just like, whoa. What about the racist, sexist boy? Have, has, does he know this happened? Um, we don't know. We, we haven't don't heard know. from him, but it doesn't, doesn't, matter. doesn't really matter anymore. <laughs> All right. It's not. Well, I hope he's watching tonight. I really do. All right, so you guys get ready. Yeah. And uh, don't break any of our stuff. I know you're a punk rock band, oh. but... Uh... <laughs> Our bad. Right, well, we'll try our Sorry. best. <laughs> right, thank you. All right, there you go. The Linda Lindas are with us. Here. <laughs> we have a special birthday to celebrate tonight as well. Our first lady, Dr. Jill Biden, turned 70 years old today. She is now the oldest sitting first lady in modern United States history. Also oldest standing. Really just the oldest. <laughs> The president and his bride celebrated by going to their beach house in Delaware, which is, the, I guess, the most old person thing Joe could think of. <laughs> <laughs> it 
They watch the sunset over the novelty t-shirt shops and adult video stores. But, but Joe did get her some thoughtful gifts. Uh, he got her a um, uh, big jar of butterscotch and a coupon for one highly invasive back rub. <laughs> oh, I bet Joe's gonna pitch some woo tonight. And Joe Biden and Jill Biden met in 1975, and somebody posted some of their old photographs. Take a look at these, because they look like they're straight out of a 1962 Sears catalog. <laughs> Here they are enjoying some family time, just like the Trumps, very similar. Jill Biden is our first lady. She was, and she was our second lady for eight years before this. But I wonder if people are paying any attention to anything that is going on at all. So in honor of her birthday, we went out on the street and we showed passersby a photo of Dr. Jill Biden to find out if anyone knows who the first lady is. Do you know who this woman is? No idea. Take a guess. Uh, Carol Burnett. Who is this person? Uh, Martha Stewart. Is that Jane Fonda? It's not Dolly Parton for sure, so I don't know. Yeah. That's I, that's true. I, I was think thinking so. Vanna White, but it's not Vanna either, so no. Barbara Streisand. She looked like Nancy Pelosi. She kind of looks like Carol Baskin. If I had to take another guess, she looked like one of the actress of Dallas or something. I think she has a cooking show with like a rapper. Is that her? She looks like somebody in government. Do you have a guess as to who? Um, Donna Fairfield. Who do you think she's married to? John Kerry, when he was alive. OK, what if we show you a picture of her and her husband? Maybe that'll help. OK. He looks familiar. Do you know who that is? What if we show you a picture of her and her husband? Maybe that'll help. Is that Hillary? What job do you think he has? Hmm, I want to say maybe like something having to do with the government, but like really up there. Like right. helping the government. Like how far up there do you think he is? Like almost close to like presidential government, like in the building. Right. But I have no idea. What does she look like her name would be? Um, Lisa, Mary. No. Krista. Christine. Maybe Emily, Barbara, um, Kathy. If I had to guess, he looked like a Gloria. Happy 57th birthday, Jane. Gloria Biden, happy birthday from Terrell Randall, Chicago. Happy 63rd birthday, Donna. Hope it's a good one. Happy birthday, Jennifer Biden. We wish you the best. Thank you. Well, it's, you know what? It's the thought that counts. And... <laughs> Hi, I'm Jimmy Kimmel. If you want to see all our latest videos, click the subscribe button. And if you don't, click anyway and close your eyes when they come on.